Good morning, Creator Living Fellowship. I'm Reverend Jorge Suarez. I'm a staff minister here at Creator Living Fellowship. And I welcome everyone to this special session of the service, pre-service meditation. So thank you all of you to show up and be part of this setup for a wonderful experience on Sunday morning. Uh, with who could reconnect in and be part of the one through the silence and through the experience of love. So um, for meditation, take a deep, um, verify you put your, your sitting, that you are in, in, in a sitting position, that you are comfortable, there is nothing that uh, produces any tension or distress in your body. Let's take a deep breath. Another deep breath. And with every deep breath, let's check our, our body, that our face is totally relaxed, that our neck is as well relaxed and comfortable, our shoulders. Our hips and legs and our arms are resting without holding in a, in a stressful way. Just relax. Take a deep breath. And with every breath that we're taking, we are just allowing ourselves, open ourselves to release our thoughts and to open our hearts to receive the silence, to be in the presence of the divine in ourselves through the silence, to listen. A deep breath. And slowly we're inviting the sound to come in and invite us into the silence.
And we back, we take a deep breath. Another deep breath. And open our eyes and a smile. We put our hands together and bow. And full of gratitude for sharing this time together, for expressing the silence and recognizing the silence and the presence in ourselves. Thank you all of you for participating in this free service meditation. Our full service on Sunday service will start at 10 in the morning, so stay tuned. Thank you.
Welcome to the Creative Living Fellowship online Sunday service. Please join us in our opening song, God is Enough. Oh, what about? 
Good morning. My name is Deborah Covington, and it is my honor and delight to serve as the Sunday service host today. And yes, God is enough. Whether you're joining us on Zoom, Facebook Live, or YouTube, it is my pleasure to welcome you here. Creative Living Fellowship is an independent religious science church, and we honor all paths that lead to truth. Our deep intention here is to be a community of love, care, and connection that opens hearts, expands consciousness, and transforms lives. And we do that through the principles and practices of the science of mind and spirit. The science of mind is a new thought, ancient wisdom teaching that provides us with tools for living our best possible lives. We believe that there is one power one presence, one life in the universe that is everywhere present, and that we are all a part of that one right now. Our founder, Ernest Holmes, said that no one need prepare to meet God. We are meeting him every day in each hour of the day. For that one power that is God is everywhere present in and through everything and everyone. I want to recognize today the practitioner, Rhonda Emmerich, who is holding our high watch for us this morning. This means that she is sitting in a meditative and contemplative state, holding a space for the perfect unfolding of our service today. Thank you, Rhonda. Our musical inspiration today is Harold Payne. Practitioner Jimmy Salverns is going to bring us our opening prayer, that will be followed by the centering moment. Then Jeannie will be back with the inspirational reading of the day. And now here's our opening prayer. (sighs) Thank you. Let's just take a deep breath in and acknowledging and knowing and affirming the divine that is here now in this present moment as always is that this divine presence is me is each and every person here now within the sound of my voice and beyond that this is the one heartbeat one breath one divine mind that this is operating now in as and through each of us And I speak my word for the highest and best for this service as it unfolds, blessing our speaker, our musical inspiration, and each person here present participating in the service that they receive exactly what they need. I send blessings to Reverend Sherry on her vacation, knowing that she is renewed and refreshed in this present moment, wherever she may be. I am grateful and I bless leaders of all faiths everywhere, knowing that the one divine presence is operating in, as, and through them now for the highest and best, for our country, for our lives, for this world. I know this to be the truth, for there is only one. And with gratitude that this is the truth, that there is only one, I release my word. I call it good. And so it is. you 
feel pain in your body chaos in your home mm -hmm. the clutter of confusion or blocks on the path that you roam do you notice me when you're happy or is your euphoria much too high why for me to get through a quiet whisper is enough for me but what will it take for you I love you when the bleakness of your winter Even in the spring and summer When you think you're the center of it all I'm there for you when you want me Even there for you when you're done I am there before you call me I come through even when you think I won't So what will it take for you to hear me? What will it take for me to get through? A quiet whisper is enough for me, but what will it take for you? From the Power of Decision by Raymond Charles Barker. I often ask myself this, will my decisions today be based on today's experiences, guided by the wisdom of the past, or will they be determined only by past memory patterns? If the latter, I will make erroneous conclusions. You have to be a today person in a today experience to have the fullness of life in the here and now. Good morning, Creative Living Fellowship. It's my great joy to be here, and it would be my greater joy to be there in person, and I certainly hope that happens soon. This is uh, a song called, We Are Free. We are traveling on a sacred journey. We are gathering. And the tides they are turning We are bridges Where walls used to be We are rivers That keep winding our way to the sea 
we are free. We are righteous, we are worthy, we are free. We are boundless, we are joyous, we are free. Our souls have been longing, a new day is dawning, we are free. Our humanity is yearning for freedom. And it's meant to be more than just words to believe in. We are reaching with outstretched hands. We are seeking to be all that we possibly can. We are free. We are righteous. We are worthy. We are free. We are boundless, we are joyous, we are free. Our souls have been longing, a new day is dawning, we are free. We are bridges, where walls used to be, we are rivers. They keep winding our way to the sea. We are free. We are righteous. We are worthy. We are free. We are boundless. We are joyous. We are free. Our souls have been longing. A new day is dawning. We are free. Wow. Thank you very much, Harold Payne, for those powerful words and a beautiful song. And now it's my pleasure to introduce a special guest speaker for us today. Reverend Dr. Jerry Troyer is a native of San Diego County, California, where he serves as a staff minister at Ohm Center for Spiritual Living and as president of Anton the Affiliated New Thought Network, an organization of independent New Thought Religious Science Centers, of which CLF is a church member. Dr. Jerry lives in La Mesa, California, with his beloved golden retriever, Maggie. Please welcome this, this one and our favorite friend, Reverend Dr. Jerry Troyer. Good morning, dear ones. It's so great to be with you today. Glad you're with me. And my heartfelt thanks to Reverend Dr. Sherry for the opportunity to be back with you. As you probably know, your topic for the month of July is New Day Dawning. And so remembering our celebration of Independence Day, my topic for this morning is Design or Default, the Freedom to Turn the Page. My Angelo is quoted is is quoted as saying, "This is a wonderful day. I've never seen this one before." In the month of July, when we think about our freedoms, included in just about everything else that you can name, is also the freedom to turn the page, the freedom to experience that new day. Of course, in Miracles writes past, present, and future are not continuous unless we force continuity on them. So my question for us today is how often do we do that? Past, present, and future, all the same, continuous, oh my goodness, I've done this before, and here it is again, kind of a thing. Mary Morrissey talks about how we are always living either in default, so the same experience over and over again, or design, something new, something different, something fresh. Default is when this looks the same way, acts the same way, walks the same way, talks the same way, versus something new. 
We do that when we don't forgive ourselves and others. Resentment toward others, regret toward ourselves can just be the worst emotions because there's nothing we can do about going back to the past and changing it. We can change our story and when we're ready, we can forgive. But I have to tell you that my, my belief, my outlook, my perception of forgiveness has changed in the last little while because I used to think it was just kind of the magic wand thing where you just wave the magic wand and you forgive. And sometimes for the guy that pulled out in front of you on the 202, for the fact that the grocery store didn't have what you were looking for, for whatever the case might be, we can do that. But very often, it takes more than that to honestly forgive whatever it is. A wonderful book, Forgiving What You Can't Forget by Lisa Turkust, and she writes, but the wounds may still be bleeding. We're afraid of making new relationships for fear of a repeat. New challenges terrify us because of past experiences of failure. We build walls around ourselves as protection to avoid a repetition of past injuries uh, and prevent people from getting close enough to hurt us again. We can't exhale. So forgiveness is so incredibly important and obviously a whole Sunday talk or two just on that topic. But unless and until we do that, we're not able to move forward and into design rather than default. Default is when we avoid living wholehearted lives for fear that we will appear less than charming and sparkling. Now, I want you to know that I am always charming and sparkling, except when I'm not. And how important it is for us to allow ourselves to feel those feelings, to feel the anger, to feel the grief, to feel the loss. Finally, we're in the process of coming out of COVID and getting back to normal, but it's been a long time. We've not been able to meet on Sunday mornings in person. We've, not, we've missed weddings and baptisms and birthday parties and memorial services because of this. And surely there's some grief attached to that, how important it is for us to allow ourselves to feel that. Sometimes we want to have that image and that, um, that appearance of, of charming and sparkling. But in the wonderful book, uh, The Gifts of Imperfection by uh, Brenny Brown, she writes, perfection is not the same as striving to be your best. Perfection is not about healthy achievement and growth. Perfectionism is the belief that if we live perfect, look perfect, and act perfect, we can minimize or avoid the pain of blame, judgment, and shame. But it's a shield. Perfectionism is a 20-ton shield that we lug around thinking it will protect us when in fact it's the thing that's really preventing us from taking flight. So rather than toxic positivity and spiritual bypass, we allow ourselves to feel whatever that is so that we can move forward. Default is when we stay in autopilot, keeping the stories, the beliefs that don't serve us, that haven't served us in some time, but we keep them because for whatever reason, we just don't want to look at them. About our health, about our money, about used cars, whatever it is, the default keeps us stuck in less than the, than keeps us stuck in living less than the wonderful life that we want to live. Do we ever feel like we just came here to pay bills and die? Do you ever feel that way? We live in a preposterously abundant universe, and yet somehow we get stuck in the just get by the claw and scratch kind of mentality. What do we believe about 
money. Do we really believe that spirit is our source or that our job or our retirement or social security is our source? And what are we, whatever we believe about it, as we know, the universe says, okay, and we stay in default and get more of whatever that is, rather than looking at it, deciding if it's still true for us or not, and healing it. Right now, gas prices are a little more than they were before. What do we say about that? What do we post about that on social media? Do we complain to anyone who will listen and blame the politicians and the oil companies and so on? Or do we recognize that we are abundant beings, that the universe is abundant, and we allow ourselves to pay whatever it is, whatever we're called to pay, out of the abundance? Because if we're complaining about it, we just get more lack and struggle. We know that. Many of you know I work for a, a, um, an organization in San Diego that provides housing, uh, employment referrals, education referrals, and life skills training to homeless 18 to 25 year olds called Urban Street Angels. And recently, and, and a big part of this is not only giving, getting them housing, and keeping them safe until they can get their own apartment, we also want to prepare them for life as adults. These are 18 to 25 year olds that might have aged out of foster care or um, got kicked out of home, their parents' house, uh, for being LGBTQ, or the home was not a safe place to be. Whatever the situation, they were on the streets or couch surfing and thankfully wound up in our program. We have about 150 youth and are working to looking to expand uh, another 20 beds uh, in the next couple of months. So one of the things that I've been working with is this life skills training. And so we uh, last Wednesday night was our first class sponsored by a local credit union and the San Diego Financial Literacy Center. And we learned about FICO scores and credit scores and how that impacts our lives. And over the next three weeks, we'll be doing more of that, including budgeting and setting goals. I love that we have the opportunity to do this with this group because they're going to learn things. And admittedly, I learned things learning about FICO scores and credit and all the rest of that. But I love the opportunity to talk about goal setting. What do you want? They want an apartment, which will be wonderful. They probably want a car. But beyond that, what do you want? How important it is for us to ask ourselves that question. You remember in the New Testament, Jesus said, ask, seek, and knock. But the universe can't bring us our greater good, our heart's desire, our dreams, if we're still stuck in the default of just trying to get along. So thinking about money, if there was a movie done about your money, what would be the title? Gone with the Wind? The Agony and the Ecstasy? To Have and Have Not? Mad Mad World? Or it's a wonderful life. Because as we know, and you might have heard this before, at any point we can look at what we believe about whatever a situation is and ask what, and I'm quoting Edwin Gaines here, what must I change about myself in order to receive this greater good? What belief do I have about this? What default belief am I stuck in that I'm ready to turn the page and move into that greater good? And because life always says yes, the universe responds and we get whatever it is. Our, now, our relationship with money could be kind of like a rock in your shoe that we walk along and we walk along and it hurts a little. And so we adjust our pinky toe to make room for our five toes, our foot and the rock. 
and we stop and adjust, but keep walking. And it gets a little more painful and a little more painful, but we just keep walking. At any point, we could pull over to the side, sit down, take our shoe off, and drop the rock. But we have to consciously do that in our physical shoe. We also have the opportunity to consciously do that in our belief about whatever it is. Drop the rock that no longer serves us and move into that more comfortable, more wonderful, greater good. It's always our opportunity. Ernest Holmes said, it's the Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. It should be our good pleasure to accept it. Default is when we stay in righteous indignation about our rules. Now, King Jerry has certain rules. You, I bet you have rules about how life is supposed to be, about what we're supposed to do and not do, what people should do and shouldn't do. And some of those have served me very well, and I bet I've served you as well. At any point, we can stop, stop the car, wait just a minute here, and decide if that rule, if that rule still works for us. I have a rule about being on time. Now, if you were late this morning, there is no judgment here, please understand. I'm talking about my rules, not anybody else's. But how often, and you might have found this to be true as well, the universe has a sense of humor because I keep drawing wonderful people into my life that do not have this rule. My late husband, Jerry, did not have this rule. So we get there in time, mostly, um, but he did not have to sit for 45 minutes and wait. He would get there just in time. But the universe and its wry sense of humor, um, my new relationship with an absolutely wonderful, wonderful young man, um, Oliver does not have such rules. So 10 o'clock means 10-ish. And I have to admit, and I never talk to him about it, so don't tell him if you see him, but I never talked about it, but it. But when we first got together, it started to make me a little crazy. And what does this mean? What does this mean when you're late? What does this mean? I'm waiting for you. Does this mean you don't love me? Does this mean you don't respect me? Does it mean you don't care? What does it mean? It means he's late. My rules coming from my father were that it means all of those things. And what I'm learning, because life is a process, not an event, is that it means he wasn't there at 10 o'clock. That's all it means. But how often do we attach that meaning and those assumptions and so forth that don't serve us, that don't feel good, but we somehow feel like we have to do that? That's living in default. That's keeping those rules and trying to apply those rules to everybody else. The other option is to recognize that, yes, that's my rule. That may not be yours. So do I need to judge you about it? Do I need to get upset about it? Do I need to rail against it? Or do I need to say, eh, that's my rule, not yours. That feels so much better than getting upset. Default is when we don't heal relationships and beliefs and go from one situation to the next in the same, looking the same way. That happens sometimes when we leave one job and go to another because our supervisor or manager just made us crazy and I can't work with these people and what's the deal with that? If you've had that experience like I have, you know, that we take ourselves with us. So whatever it was, whatever that belief system was that brought us that experience, there's the potential for that experience to be again. Even though it's a different company, it's, it might be a different industry, the people, the players look differently, act differently, talk differently, but 
we brought our beliefs that we're not enough or that we're not valued or whatever the case might be, we brought those with us. So moving from default to design, we can look at what we believed about that and change it to something different. Because I don't know about you, but I'm sick to death of that and it's time for something different. So the opportunity at every turn is to see in this situation, in this area of my life, am I living by design or by default? Does this still work for me? Or am I ready for something new and different and better? And life always says yes. So we have the opportunity for that. There's a great quote by Aeneas Nin, and I'm not sure that I pronounced her name right, but, and you've probably heard this, but she wrote, and the day came when the risk to remain tight in a bud was more painful than the risk it took to blossom. Change can be scary. Change can be difficult. But if nothing changes, nothing changes. So my question for us today, are we living in default or design? Where are we ready to turn the page into that new day dawning, into that greater life that is there for us in our relationships, in our health, in our money, in every area of our lives? Where are we ready to blossom into that greater good? So I would like to close with, a, this is a great affirmation um, I'm not sure if you're familiar with the book, uh, Basic, uh, Basic Principles of the Science of Mind by Frederick Bales. It's an it's a eight and a half by 11 workbook um, and goes back to basic principles of new thought and religious science. It's absolutely wonderful. And at the end of, I believe it's the first chapter, he writes, I face the future with happy expectancy, with wonder. I wonder what new experiences of the good, the joyous, the enriching lie in wait for me. I wonder what new persons will be drawn into my life, what new stores of health and vitality will be opened, what new depths of understanding will be uncovered within me. The future lies within me, stretched in smiling repose. It is an unmarked, unmarred, page. My thought is my pen and life is what I write. No one else can write upon this page. I therefore choose to know this day that the experiences that lie before me will be the best I have ever known. So with that in mind, join me in the light for just a moment. And we give great thanks for the opportunity to be back together today, to be reminded of the truth of our being, that we really are the essence, expression, and experience of spirit. And so what I know for each of us that this day in this moment, and in every moment, we have the opportunity to move from default to design, into greater financial abundance, into greater physical health, into greater and more wonderful and more nurturing relationships with ourselves as well as with others. Every moment there is the possibility for that. And so we choose to turn the page, to embrace this new day that's dawning and step into our greater good. For our time together, for this beloved spiritual community, for this teaching, we give great thanks. And together we say, and so it is. And so it is. Thank you, Reverend Jerry, for that very inspiring and encouraging talk today. 
This is the time we participate in the divine law of giving and receiving by giving of our tithes and offerings. CLF is a tithing church, and we invite you to join us in this very sacred practice by tithing here at CLF. Click the donate link on our website or in the comments in Zoom, on Facebook, or in YouTube. Continued important announcement is the change of our donation software from Breeze to Aplos. If you currently auto tithe and are still using Breeze, there will be a deadline of July 31st, which is a week from today, to make the change over from Breeze to Aplos. You need to do two things. First, you need to cancel your auto tithe account in Breeze. And then second, you need to create your new auto tithe in Aplos. Don't worry if you have any questions or don't understand, I'm here to help. You can give me a call or through the uh, church phone, or you can email me at deb at creativelivingfellowship.com. The new CLF text to give phone number is 844-941-4360. I'll be reaching out to you, those who are auto tithers, who have not made the change yet during the week to assist. However you choose to give to CLF, we truly appreciate your continued financial support. And now let us repeat our offering blessing. Divine love through me blesses and multiplies all that I am, all that I have all that I give, all that I receive, and all that I circulate. Thank you, God, and so it is. And it's my pleasure now to welcome back Carol Payne with our offering song. I am whole, I am free. I am everything I think I can be I am healthy I am strong And I'm right where I belong I've got the power I've got the power of I am I am joyful I am healed I am open to the paths that are revealed I am thankful I am blessed I am free from all worry and stress I've got the power I've got the power of I am I've got the power, I've got the power, I've got the power of I am, yes I do. I've got the power, I've got the power, I've got the power of I am. I am loving. I am loved I am everything I need I am enough I am confident I am unique I am positive with every word I speak You see I've got the power I've got the power of I am I've got the power, I've got the power, I've got the power of I am. I've got the power, I've got the power, I've got the power of I am. Hey, I got the power, you got the power, we got the power. Of I am 
Hey, hey, I got the power, you got the power, we got the power. The power of I am. You got the power. I do have the power. Thank you so much, Cheryl. That was awesome. Uh, I love it when you're with us on Sundays. And thank you, Reverend Dr. Jerry, for that awesome talk as well. Um, it is now time for us to do announcements. So let's jump right in. Ah, technically, we're still on vacation, but staff's here today because we just love you all so much. There's no way we could stay away on a Sunday. But after today, we're right back on it and we will be wrapping it up tomorrow. So our office is still closed on Monday. There will be no Monday practice with Reverend Jorge or Tuesday night community care connection meeting with Reverend Sherry this week. Reverend Sherry has actually two weeks of vacation. So she's got one more week left. Do you experience anxiety, depression, or having trouble focusing? Meditation is a great practice that benefits not only your emotional and physical well-being, it can also deepen your connection to the divine. Join us for midday meditation to start or support your existing meditation practice. Midday meditation is at noon, Monday through Friday, and uh, we also hold a 20-minute pre-service meditation on Sundays at 9.35 a.m., and thank you, Reverend Jorge, for today's meditation. Join us for any of these meditations through our Facebook and YouTube live streams. The Ernest Holmes book study is happening. They are reading the hidden, ugh, let's try that again. The hidden power of the Bible. What science of mind reveals about the Bible and you. And meeting weekly on Saturdays to discuss, grow, and connect. The Ernest Holmes book study is a drop-in group and also a great spiritual practice. So get your copy of The Hidden Power of the Bible and read through page 132 and then join them on Saturday from 10 a.m. to noon. In Karen Drucker's upcoming Fearless Fun and Freedom online workshop, you will have the opportunity to identify what freedom means to you and how much you're expressing that quality. Identify what is an it and a not it in your life and gain tools to discern the next step and support and clarifying what is yours to do. But only if you register and show up in Zoom on Sunday, July 31st. So register today. Our Sunday prayer room is available to you after service today. Our practitioners are available for one-on-one -on -one prayer with you in private breakout rooms on Zoom. Or you can reach out to one of our on-call practitioners. The list can be found in the comments or on our website under prayer. You can also send an email a pre Ooh. you can also email a prayer request to prayer at creativelivingfellowship.com. Upon receipt, our practitioners will pray over your prayer request for 30 days. Remember, you don't need to walk around with a heavy heart. Your practitioners are waiting for the opportunity to serve you in prayer. After service, we have Sunday fellowship too. Join us in Zoom and hang out, discuss the service, what's on your mind or heart, and connect with your CLF family. If you're in Zoom with us now, just stay here. And if you're not, you can find the link for fellowship and other activities on our website under events our Facebook events, or in your weekly newsletter. Well, that is it for the announcements. It is now time to go back to Deb. Thank you, Nicole. And I want to say a, a special thank you to everyone who has supported the service today. We do this together as a team because we are one. Thank you and blessings. And I have just a couple of reminders. The first reminder is our community prayer, which is the treatment for supply, continues to be a valuable tool to use in our spiritual go bag. So I encourage you to keep using that because 
it does work. Secondly, connect. We are a community of connection. I encourage you to reach out, to continue reaching out to those who you may haven't seen for a while that are on your heart or minds, but connect. Show whichever way you feel comfortable in connecting with each other. Thank you for joining us today and blessings to you for the week. And now here's our final song of I Release and Let Go. I release and I let go. I let the spirit run my life and my heart is open wide. Yes, I'm Oh